Always remember you will own nothing and be happy. Now smile. They're always watching. You came here for the truth. Today I want to look at some different information. I believe it is absolutely critical that you understand this. The first thing we are going to look at is the changing times. So much has unfolded just over the last two years, and I'm going to give you some information that you need to know. The second thing we are going to look at is the metaverse. The metaverse, this virtual world, and what's happening inside of it, and what it means to you, even if you have no interest in it whatsoever. I will bring you some important info. And the third thing is basically that people paying millions for what exactly? Yeah, I'll show you all of that and more. Let's begin. I want to start by looking at the jobs situation. Typically, you wouldn't see anything like this, but right now we are dealing with a crisis like no other. The U.S. job openings to the, to the number of unemployed, and it just gives us a record high at this time when we have the most job openings ever, ever. At the same time, the unemployment rate, I think it's like 4.2%. It's something ridiculously low. And you've got an obvious, obvious problem that is happening today. Is the future universal basic income where people sit home, collect the paycheck, and then spend that money into the economy? Or is it something else altogether? What's tougher? finding drivers or trailers. And this just extends into what I've talked about so many times before, and that is finding employees, companies, not just at fast food restaurants and not just, you know, wherever you would see in a general clerk position, low paying job, a cashier or what have you. It's for drivers. It's all over the place. But you could say, Oh, this is because they don't pay them enough. And of course, money is a great incentive to get people. But look at Amazon's fulfillment centers. Amazon's fulfillment centers are paying, as far as I'm aware, $15 an hour. And yet, they are absolutely booming. People are coming in left, right, and center, despite what we see in the news about them. They have hired an extremely large amount of people. At this time, I think they had hired during 2020, hired something like 400,000 people while other companies were getting rid of people. Very strange. And then this one here, 12 U.S. cities that have broken annual homicide records, the top being Philadelphia, 500, 500 being the highest since 1990. Now, these are always going up and down and okay? you never really know, but some of these cities that have such affluence and prominence that are very, very wealthy in general. Maybe it's San Francisco. You also have this grand disparity where we have extreme poverty and you know drug use and all kinds of things. And this just shows you this future of the divide between the rich and the poor. It's worrisome, to say the least. The dark side of 15-minute grocery delivery. Now, how did I just go from homicides to grocery delivery? Stay with me, okay? Many warehouses dubbed dark stores are quietly taking over urban retail space. Left unregulated, the insatiable demand for faster delivery will only hasten the erosion of community life. For people who don't know what this is, imagine you have a store or a warehouse, think of it, and you have these shoppers that would normally be going to Whole Foods or what have you to pick up your products, put them in the car, deliver them to you. That takes a period of time. And there are many companies that do this. But what if you have a dedicated store that people are literally just waiting there to then deliver the food to you? That's the next level because they're already there and waiting 15 minute delivery. And there's many things to talk about in here, okay? But they mention a couple. These dark stores taking over the urban retail space is potentially a good thing for one reason, that is 
the commercial retail is just just absolutely nose diving the not necessarily with you know you look at some stocks things don't make sense but i'm talking about you just see inventory piling up on the commercial side if it's being filled in by you know amazon or in this case dark stores this could be beneficial in that respect but as they mentioned here the erosion of community life is another aspect and stay with me i'm getting to something because when you interact with other human beings as, as weird as it sounds for me to say that you're going to run into them you're going to see people that you didn't expect to see there you, see, you meet new friends you have new relationships and so on these type of things happen when you are going to a place where other random strangers are going to be and there's much more to it obviously that brings me to this meat tech 3d reports breakthrough in cultured steak production you see that steak right there it's meat i guess but essentially they take some of the stem cells from these cows grow them in a laboratory and then multiply their cells to form both the fat cells and the, the meat cells, essentially. And they form a steak. <laughs> it's, this is happening, okay? Um, some say it's, it's good for the environment and all this, and I get it. Okay, but, but what's happening here is that we are moving further and further away. Um, I'm not sure if if I, my description will be of any relevance to you, but think of uh, your frequencies moving back and forth. Think of a guitar. If you hit two notes slightly out of tune, you can hear both of them overlapping, essentially. But once we find that tune or find the center, things make a lot more sense here, completely out of tune. Getting married in the metaverse. And now we get taken to this point. Let's dig in. Getting married in the universe. This right here is just showing an example of two people that got married in the metaverse. They also got married in real life, but they took it up a notch or however you want to call that by getting married in the metaverse as well. And then we have this. Surrogates. I don't know if you've watched this movie. Uh, I don't remember it to be a very good movie. I don't remember much about it other than the fact that in this movie with Bruce Willis, essentially everybody lives, you know, in their in their homes and their have their surrogate, like imagine like a robot out there in the real world doing all their stuff. Uh, maybe there's crime, maybe there's pollution. I don't remember what the case was exactly, but you wanted to stay home because you know, your, your perfect looking robot out there is going to do all your dirty work and everything and you stay inside. And I think they could mentally, telepathically deal with them or something. I can't remember what it was. The point here is that we're becoming an extension of ourselves by engaging with te technology too much. But that's, I guess that's an opinion. You could let me know in the comments below. Are we engaging with technology too much? Yeah, you're watching a video here. That's one aspect, but I think it can get too far. Okay, then we have this. Buying digital real estate now is like buying land in Manhattan when it was still forest and farmland. What do you think of that? Is buying digital real estate, in this case here, $4.3 million worth, by the way, like buying Manhattan real estate? Is it really? Not sure. Not so sure about that. And this article here at Reuters, it's actually from a few months ago, but the point I wanted to make is in virtual worlds such as Decentraland, people can display their NFT art collections, walk around with friends, visit buildings, and attend events. Sotheby's is actually getting into this as well. Hey, they're going to profit off whatever they can. And you got to understand here what's happening. I think it's good if somebody's creating a digital art, there's a, there's an environment for people to look at that. You can go around, you, you can see it in 3D, you can interact in, in whatever way. That's good. Okay. But I think we get to a point where we are paying 
as they say here, paying $4.3 million for a piece of real estate. They, there was another article I was looking at where uh, within this game or whatever you want to call it, virtual reality world, where there's like a nice, like let's say an A grade type of location, and they bought this plot of land and are going to develop on it and have stores essentially where people can buy merchandise and so on to be used in the digital world. Okay, all totally virtual. And I get it. I understand. Yeah, I get it. But this is messed up. <laughs> you can tell me what you think, honestly. And then we have, of course, the digital currencies, which are at the forefront of this already way ahead um, than the other, other aspects of this. Fidelity to offer Bitcoin-backed loans. And I think this is interesting. We've heard of this before. Bitcoin-backed loans. So we are going away from the traditional monetary system, and we are moving into something like this. This is, of course, long-term bullish for cryptocurrencies to see things like this, to see the institutional investors. It's not like it is for institutional only at this time, but what I'm saying is more bigger players getting in is long-term bullish, um, of course, for any of these technologies. And then we have this okay, to finish it off. Digital assets are among the top contender for a major correction in 2022, with nearly three quarters of institutions polled saying they are not appropriate investments for most retail investors. Now, you know, you look at the average hedge funds performance and it hasn't been good. So I don't know if a lot of these institutions should be the ones discussing this. However, what I see personally what I see here is concerning simply because of what we look at and the, I don't want to use the word, but I'll just do it, exuberance that we are seeing in the markets today and people getting infatuated with things that maybe aren't so prime time. I mean, we're buying little tiny pixels. I mean, I've seen some of these things that have sold for millions of dollars. It's like seven pixels. And I get it, it's art and, and everything, but you don't want to see this craziness because it starts to unravel everything else that is real. What do you think? Do you, do you see this future that's being built for us where we don't have anything physical and tangible? We are simply a surrogate sent off into reality. I, I don't know which is the real reality. This is the matrix. Is this inception a dream within a dream I, I don't know i want to know your thoughts on this it's a little bit esoteric of a topic but but i see it every day and i want to talk about it so although it's not very popular and i'm sure very few will watch this video i want to thank you for being here at this time thank you for the support by giving me a thumbs up right there it's down below and if you haven't seen this video yet, you definitely want to check it out. So just click it and I'll see you there.